two important assumptions we've made when we describe the model. So we've introduced that uh, two function. We've introduced a matching function to describe how uh, workers and firms come together. And we've introduced a production function that describes. Um, so let me just sum up assumptions we made along the way. So we had a matching function. And that described how our vacancies and unemployed workers get together. We also introduced a production function uh, and you remember which was given by why the output of the firm is A productivity times N number of producers to power of alpha. And another important assumption we made is that we said that we were only going to consider um, labor markets in which um, labor flows were uh, balanced. So if you want, labor, labor flows were um, in equilibrium. Okay? So in a sense here, we are, really fo we are focusing on um, labor markets that are in equilibrium in a physical sense. Um, so in the sense that you have a stock of unemployed workers, we have a stock of um, employed workers, and these two stock uh, keep a constant size because the flows in and out of employment and the flows in and out of unemployment are uh, balanced. Okay? Uh, so we, we, we've um, decided to focus on The labor market with a balanced flows. Okay, and so if you remember the little diagram that we have done, you have the number of employed, you have the number of unemployed, you have a flow from E to U, you have a flow from U to E. What we assume is that the E to U are always equal to the U to E at any point in time. Okay, um, so that's, that's an assumption we make on um, kind of the operation of the labor market. Um, something I should say is that um, if you took the um, kind of market structure to the letter, actually the, uh, the number of unemployed would be um, what we call a state variable and its evolution would be given by a differential equation. So let me just uh, make a quick detour here. Uh, so if we want to be uh, if we want to be exact, unemployment follows um, a differential equation. Which is the differential equation? Well, that u dot, so with the physics notation, dot is a derivative with respect to uh, time. Okay, so the change of unemployment over time is going to be equal to uh, whatever increases unemployment, which is the number of people who come from uh, employment, so it's going to be equal to s times e minus what makes the pool of unemployment fall at any point in time number of people who find a job, f of theta times u. Um, and of course, e, oh, well, sorry about the notation, the notation we have used wasn't e, well, yeah, that's slightly awkward, sorry. Um, so the notation we had used here was l for employment, apologies. Um, so we can rewrite that differential equation as s times h, the number of people in the labor force, minus u, equal to f of minus f of theta times u is equal to u dot. Okay, and then we can uh, kind of rewrite that as u dot is equal to um, s times h, which is fixed, minus s plus f of theta times u. So here you have a differential equation, uh, a differential equation with um, u and u dot. Okay, 
So that's if we want it to be exact. Um, but if we, um, so this is going to tell us how you evolve over time. But if the flows um, on the labor market are very large, so if this here is very large and this is very large, Um, so if these things are very large, what's going to happen is that U dot um, will move very quickly to uh, to adjust to a point where um, U dot is equal to zero almost all the time. Because here you have a dynamical um, system, but you um, you know in this type of system you always converge. Toward, you know, in the in the long run, you always converge to a steady state situation where u dot is equal to zero. Okay, um, and if the flows that I've highlighted are large, you're always going to be uh, at u dot equal to zero. Uh, and when u dot is equal to zero, it means that your uh, flows are balanced, and that's the assumption we make here. Um, and so here we're just going to assume. We assume that uh, u dot equals zero all the time, which is an accurate assumption if the flows on the labor market are large um, compared to the stocks, and um, that's what we see in, in you know in reality, um, especially especially in the U.S. Um, labor market. Okay, um, let me just show you why it is that um, the differential equation pushes unemployment towards u dot equals zero just to um, Kind of cap this argument. Uh, so look, we can uh, draw a phase diagram. Okay, um, where I put u dot on the y-axis and I put u on the x-axis. Okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a phase diagram like this. Okay, uh, so here, this is a point where u dot equal to zero. So this is the steady state of the system. Okay, and what I want to show you is that if we are not at u dot, um, the uh, u dot equal to zero, the steady state, the labor market, the physical labor market is going to converge toward uh, that point uh, where u dot is equal to zero. So how do we know that? Well, to see that, I have to draw u dot as a function of u. And I have a, a show. So u dot, we see that when u is equal to zero, u dot is equal to s times h, which is a positive number. So here I put my s times h. And then we see that then we have minus s plus f of theta times u, so that's going to be something that's decreasing and linear. Okay. Um, and the slope here is minus s plus f of theta. Okay, uh, and so this point here that we have, what do we have here? Well, we have u dot equal to zero, so that means that s times h is equal to s plus f of theta times u, and that means that u is equal to s over s plus f of theta h, which is exactly what we had derived earlier when uh, we had assumed the balance, uh, balance flows. Um, but what you can see is that uh, what you can see is that if, for instance, u was not at uh, that point where um, so that's what we had seen with balance uh, with balance flows. If u wasn't at that point of steady state, so let's say instead u was below here. What would we have? So if u was here, you can see that you could read here u dot 
would be positive, right? So it means that you would be increasing over time. So if we were here, you would be increasing like this over time. And let's say you're at that point, what happens here? Well, once more, u dot is still positive. Okay? And so here, even if you were here, you wouldn't stop here, you would keep on increasing until you got to that point. And would we stay here? Well, yes, here your system is, um, is actually stable, your dynamical system. So imagine that you would continue and would get to that point. What would happen here? Well, following the same logic, you could read here, you would get a u dot negative. So if you went past the steady state, your unemployment will start to fall and you will get back. So basically, the dynamical forces of our, you know, of our labor market with employed and unemployed that uh, move together pushes the system to be to always go towards that steady state here. Okay, for a given separation rate and a given tightness. And here's the assumption that we're making is that we're always very close, very close to that point. We're making the assumption that we'll never depart very much from that point where flows are balanced. Um, and so firms take that into account, they behave as if flows are always balanced, workers take that into account, and we're going to model the labor market as being always here. Um, so as you can see, for that to be true, if our uh, black curve here, so if that curve was very flat, it means that the dynamics would be very slow to get to the steady state region, and the assumption wouldn't be very accurate. If the curve is very steep, then we know that we're going to move very, very quickly towards the steady state, and hence the assumption is accurate. And, but it turns out that in reality, um, S and um, so S and F of theta, uh, they are quite large um, in reality, and therefore the, the slope is going to be uh, actually uh, quite, uh, quite large. So this is actually steep in reality. And hence we are never very far from the steady state region that I've highlighted here. Which is why um, you know, we can uh, make that assumption that flows are, uh, are always balanced. And therefore, you know, firms behave as if they had a stable number of unemployed, the unemployed BF, a st stable number of employed workers, sorry, the unemployed behave as if uh, the unemployed behave as if um, the rate of unemployment is, is stable over time, um, and so on and so forth. Um, but that, you know, that's a physical assumption we've made that we are just never uh, very far, and so we are not going to pay attention to this little deviation from the kind of the steady state of the.